Hey guys, and welcome back to another Spooktober episode. Um, so today we have some Chick-fil-A because we are celebrating today. So I have been affected by COVID. Um, not like actually by COVID, but like by the whole pandemic, as a lot of people have in the whole world. Um, and after almost eight months of not working, I'm finally going back to work. So I'm so excited. Um, so now I've got to figure out my film schedule, work schedule, and my workout schedule. Did I already say that? Gym schedule, work schedule, and filming schedule. Those three. So I'm still going to try to post four videos a week. So two mukbangs and two gameplay videos. I'm really going to try my hardest because I've been having so much fun doing this again. Um, am I recording? I am recording. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but let's get started. I am starving. So, we have some fries, chicken nuggets, and then also a spicy chicken sandwich, but it doesn't look that spicy. So, I might have gotten the regular one. I think it's the spicy one. I'm still going to dip it in buffalo salsa. <laughs> so today is a really sad story about Halloween. It was happening in 1963 on Halloween night. And it was at the Indiana State Fair. Now, I've never heard of this. And I don't know why I never heard of this case because it is crazy. So... A few minutes before 11 o'clock at night, this huge explosion happens. And people are freaking out because, you know, it's an explosion. I'm going to take this flannel off because it's hot. I've just been running around. I had to go to H-E-B real quick to get an ankle brace because my ankle, my ankle and foot was being really stupid. So, whatever. And then I wanted to film this and I had to wait forever in the line. Um, so, but back to the story. It's at Indiana State Fair. It's called Holiday on Ice. How fun, huh? So, this huge explosion rings out. People are screaming, people are crying. 74 people ended up dead and almost 400 were injured by the end of the night. Now what happened? Now when I first heard an explosion, I thought of like someone, you know, just doing it on purpose, like wreaking habit to cause pain on other people. So this is kind of what happens leading up to it. So. There's some figure skaters doing their little cute tricks, you know, gliding around on the ice. And in one of the concession stands under the stairs, this lady is telling another coworker, hey, like, it smells like gas in here. And so, as they're going to get help, this huge explosion happens. So what happened was this 100 pound rusty propane tank was slowly leaking gas into the air in this poorly ventilated concession stand. I can attest to that because I worked at a, a few concession stands like at high schools and at like bigger like arenas or whatever. And there's no ventilation in those at all. I mean, we have our bin hoods, but that's it. Nothing else. And the gas came in contact with an electric popcorn uh, thing, and it just caused this huge explosion. So the explosion happens. It goes up 40 feet in the air. And from reports, people were saying that people were flying in the air. Um, the concrete columns were flying around too. Um, and then also too where the crater was formed because of the explosion, 
people were falling into that that were because it was under a staircase or under a seating and the ones that were fell into the crater were buried by all the rubble of it all falling in and the photos are pretty sad like there's there's quite a few photos of that night it's just like people under it like reaching for help or yeah it's it's crazy I would I mean if you're curious I would look up the photos because they are gruesome but they're not like I mean they are gruesome so so by this time people are freaking out and uh, authorities and stuff are starting to become aware of the situation so they actually turned the coliseum that the thing was in into like a makeshift hospital and morgue now one of the photos that really like i guess hit or resonated with me was this photo of one of the rooms where they start collecting people's things and in the photo you can just see a bunch of shoes. And by the end of them collecting it, they had over 185 unmatched shoes. I remember we had like four or five boxes just filled with handbags. Which I guess maybe it's easier if you do find the handbag because most likely the handbag will contain like a license or an ID. But very sad. And then also, once they had all the deceased people lined up on the ice, because also this was on ice, so the bodies were just laying there on the ice. Um, they had people that still were missing people in their party, and they would go down the line and see if any of those people were their loved ones, which I couldn't imagine, like, that's crazy, like, just lift up, no, that's not her, like, how heartbreaking could that be, especially on such a fun holiday, too, like, you're out with your family, like, taking little Timmy out on ice, like, I remember I saw Disney on ice, I had a little, uh, alien from Buzz Lightyear, I got a little icy in that, and I, that was the best night of my life, it was crazy, too, because there were quite a few reporters that were there that were attending the show, and some that I guess were like giving coverage on it, you know, to write an article about how great of a hit it was. And this was opening night too. Isn't that crazy? One of the reporters was saying that it was almost out of a movie. I have never seen anything like that since he was in World War II. I think it just shows the severity of like how badly people were hurt. Now, World War II was a very, you know, intense war. A lot of people passed away um, from fighting in the war and just because of the war. The report was saying that was kind of weird because the explosion rang out and it was kind of quiet. And then you slowly heard people crying and screaming. And then he even said that. At this point, too, the orchestra is still playing, so I'm thinking, like, Titanic, almost, like, maybe they were, like, the show has to go on, you know? People were saying that it was really eerie because you would see, like, a pair of shoes, and then you would look a few feet over, and there's just, like, a body laying in a puddle of blood, and you would assume that, oh, wow, that's... That's those person's shoes, but they got blown off in the blast, you know? And then, so the ice thing was like a makeshift morgue. And then, next to where they had the state fair, they had this huge cattle barn. So that turned into the impromptu hospital, so that people could get immediate attention. Without having to take them all the way to a hospital or whatever else. Once everything is said and done, people want answers. And I would want answers too, like, because there's kids, there's women, there's men, like, everyone was there, you know? 
It was a state fair. It's a family thing to do. So the Indian Indianapolis fire chief, the GM of the Coliseum, the concession stand manager, and the propane gas tank provider were all indicted on charges of like, I guess, negligence. I'm getting full. I didn't think I would because I was really hungry. But I'm actually getting kind of full. So the only person that ended up being convicted was the gas supplier. Which I guess, at the end of the day, it is their fault because their propane tank was the thing that was faulty and that was leaking. Now later on, the Indiana Supreme Court ends up overturning this um, like indictment or like conviction of the gas company. And instead, I guess it would became like a civil court. Um, I'm assuming, I think that would be the technical term. But instead, all the victims and whatnot, anyone affected by it that was there that night, was given $4.6 million in settlement. So I don't know if each person was given $4.6 million because if so, that would have been a lot because over 400 were injured, so those, those live. So 400 times 4.6 million, that's a lot. So I don't know if it's that or if it was 4.6 million total and then they split it up. But also too, it probably was 4.6 split up because too, this was in 1963. So 4.6 million back then was like a lot of money versus now like I feel like it wouldn't be that much. You know, like, I'm trying to think of how much Susan Powell's family was given. Oh, you know what? I want to say it was like 96 million or something. But that's not going to bring back her or her kids, so. But don't get me started on that case, because that case, I could go on for hours if... If y'all want a video on that case, we can do like a series because I'm going to need a series because unless y'all want to watch like a four hour video of me rant about this case. Because that case, I have a lot to say about that case. Um, yeah. Over the years, they've renamed this Coliseum. At first it was like a Pepsi Coliseum and now it's the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. And which I think is a good move on them. They have done a $63 million renovation on the whole building, which is good. So that means it's safe now, hopefully. We'll see. I've never been, <laughs> so. But yeah, that's a really crazy case that happened on Halloween that I'd never heard of and I wanted to share with y'all because I feel like it was a story that should be heard. And it was so sad that that many people died and were hurt. That's scary. It's like some final destination stuff, honestly. It is so crazy because those concession stand workers were literally like trying to go and get help to be like, hey, like something's wrong. And as we're getting help, or trying to get help, it just blows up. Crazy. So I still have some food left and I can still eat some more, so I'm going to talk about something else real quick because I just thought of this. So, we were just talking about the Susan Powell case, and if you haven't heard of that case or anything, I highly recommend to look into it because it is a it's such a heart gut wrenching case, especially if you listen to some of the 911 calls made. Um, yeah, it's. Whew. But I was watching the Chris Watts uh, Netflix documentary. It was crazy because him, Chris Watts, and Josh Powell, they're so similar. 
like I know about the Chris Watts case, but I wasn't too familiar about it. Like I knew that like he killed his pregnant wife and his children. So he's already a piece of trash for that. But watching it all, like the officer's camera and his interviews and all that, wow. Him and Josh Powell are so similar. Like, Josh Powell was very, he rarely showed emotion. He was almost like, like, pathetic. Like, when I was watching Chris Watts, the documentary about it, I was like, you're fucking pathetic, dude. You're so pathetic. Like, I don't know how to explain it. If you're familiar with both both cases, I think you would also see the resemblance in the two. Because also too, like the officers are like, aren't you like upset that she's missing? And he's like, well, yeah, like, and that's just how Josh was too. Like he he never showed like remorse or it's just so crazy. Like the similarities and. Chris Watts was just not strong enough to go through with lying the whole way. Because Josh Powell lied about the truth up until the day that he killed himself and his two children. He took his truth to the grave. But Chris Watts could not do that. He could not hold up. And he ended up confessing and whatnot. Which is what I wish Josh Powell would have done. Because right now his kids would still be alive. Because his kids were killed. I think. Four years. Three or four years after he killed his wife. And it's also sad too that we still don't know where Susan's body is. So I guess that's good in the Chris Watts case because at least we do, they were able to find their bodies. It's crazy. Now, I don't think this is a spicy chicken sandwich. I mean, it's good. But it tastes like the normal one. Well, guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you for tuning in for to another episode of Spooktober. I believe this is Spooktober 3? I believe. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If y'all have any cases y'all would want me to talk about or any conspiracies or anything like that, Comment them down below and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.